You're watching 3 Pound Fishing, sponsored by these great companies. Hey, thanks for joining me again, 3 Pound Fishing. We're back in Southern Illinois having a great time catching these summer slabs, and today is no different. Today, folks, we're going to be talking a lot about live scope, and we're back on the piles as we will be for most of the summer. But before we hit the tournament trail again in the fall, join me and let's learn and talk a lot about this live scope stuff because I'm telling you right now, it's key to a lot of what these fish are doing and having it is invaluable. Please do me a favor and subscribe. Let's put some slabs in the boat. I'm gonna call this episode the stormy morning. It is quite scary. I don't know if it's scary, but it's sketchy. Definitely sketchy. This fish are at 14. Look at that picture, folks. That's a good picture. Right there. I'm going to drop right in there. You can see it moving down there. Let's see if we can pick one of these guys off. Here he comes. Boy, they want it, but they can't finish the deal. That is a lot of crappie, folks. That is just a ton of crappie down there, and those are good sized marks. I always utilize that 18 foot forward, 20 foot forward actually is what it is, and um, you know, look at that, I got them dodging from, coming from the upstairs, coming down there to it, um, oh that guy's really aggressive, he might have got it, nope, all I'm doing is watching that weight, and um, I mean, I'm watching the fish, obviously, but um, when I see that weight really move, wow, I cannot believe they didn't touch that minnow. That minnow right there is out swimming them crappie. So what I do is I look for a really small minnow. That's the strategy there. It's downsizing. The other thing, the other thing I always consider is how about a jig? A jig ain't going to swim away from them. So on this particular day I'm using uh, Patriot from Garland um, it's just a good color for this lake to be honest with you wow those fish are stacked I mean these are you just don't get much better imaging than this right here I mean that's what you want to see right there that is a money shot for live scope That is amazing. Seven minutes here and nothing but solid fish. Now I know we got a storm and all that stuff. We're in the heat of the summer, although it is cool right now. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why they're not biting, but good Lord, that is something else. Big fish moving in on that guy. That's the minnow. A little light tap. Look at that. I spook them out of there. Look how they're moving now. Look how they're moving. Good night. I mean, come on. I have downsized that minnow to a dink. And they still didn't want anything to do with it. I'll tell you what. We got a tournament coming up here. And if they pick this lake, it's going to be hard pressed. I mean, maybe you bounce it off the bottom. You know, I don't know. But I mean, I'm in their face. Of 
Boy, summer fishing can be frustrating. I mean, we all know it. And I'll tell you what, live scope just makes it that much more frustrating. <laughs> We're out here about seven o'clock this morning. Uh, we've got steam rising off the water right now in front of me. That's pretty cool. Uh, the air temperature has really dropped. We're looking at 70 degrees. Water temperature is roughly around 85. Um, and that's the thing about summer fishing, folks. I'm telling you right now, you can have some incredible images and you get used to what big fish look like on live scope. So you know you've got good sized fish there, but sometimes they just don't bite. And it's the most frustrating thing I've ever experienced. So on this particular day, we do put slabs in the boat. We're about to put them in the boat. So uh, hang tight here, we're about to do it. But I wanted to show you that it's not all perfect. It, it doesn't all just happen. And uh, you do go through some tough times in the boat waiting for those fish to strike. And well, let's get to some strikes. Here we go. There's a fish. Them are tough to come by today. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> That's our first aggressive fish. Nice little eater. I'll tell you what right now, folks, it's 73 degrees. A little humid, you can tell the, the hot weather is coming today. In fact, we're projected for a 100 degree index today. That's a nice little fish. Um, letting them go today. Anyway, the weather's coming. But this storm's gotta pass first, and by then we'll be off the water, so it ain't gonna affect us none. That was nice to see a nice aggressive fish. All right, just to talk a little bit about you know live scope basics. When you're searching, you want to search in this 30 uh, foot mode that you're seeing right now on the screen. Um, when we get closer up to this pile, and I've already es established the pile has some fish on it, um, we're going to zoom in at 15, and that's probably the most popular forward view that people are using. You get used to what a big fish looks like there, and. Uh, but anytime I'm cruising around, I'm always keeping it on that 30, here comes that pile, you can see it in that 30 mode. And um, there it is right there. there's your pile. Looks like there's fish around it. And uh, as soon as we get it inside that 15, um, we'll switch it over to that 15 foot forward mode. Now, because I have a decent wind in, on me right now, I might put it in spot lock. So now I'm gonna switch over to the 15. There it is. And um, I'll try to stay off it just a little bit and swing it in here. If I don't have much wing wind, <laughs> um, I don't I don't tend to use spot lock, but I'm not gonna use spot lock right now either. I don't think so. Ooh, anytime I'm seeing darting fish. Well, those look like okay marks. Um, all right, I'm putting it on spot lock right there so it might shake around a little bit. Um, and there we go. We're going to let that sucker drop. Actually, look at that guy can't get it. It always blows my mind when I see a fish can't get it. So anyway, I got 15. Here they come. Here comes the big pile. And um, looks like my target depth is going to be 12. So I'm just going to pendulum this out there and let it come in from behind. And it's gonna come right on top of them. Here it comes. And then usually you can peel one off. There comes one or two. And that's when you can pretty much tell whether or not they're eating or not. And, um, you know, we got one on there now. He wants it, but he just can't get it. I don't know. An underachiever, I call him. You know, they're just not that terribly interested. Let's see if I can coax this guy to come on up. Nope. 
They were crappy. Two small ones, I'll tell you what. Tough, tough, tough to come by a good one. a decent one a decent one good eater anyway oh my goodness we got problems this tournament ooh look at that scared off this pile wow we got problems for this tournament I'll tell you Might be our best fish of the day. No. Yeah, yeah, probably is. Right there. Still just an eater. Another good solid eater out here on a beautiful morning. Let that guy go. But hey, we might have found a pile that was active. That was quick. Hey folks, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And we have a lot more live scope videos coming out. So pay, stay with us, subscribe, ring that bell because three pound fishing is going to talk to you all about this live scope stuff. We're enjoying it. We're having a great time. And don't forget about side imaging. It's also still very, very, very important. So anyway, we appreciate you watching. Back to the tournament trail here this spring, not to mention the fall. So thanks again. I appreciate it. Have a great day.